I'm Ken Vosch. I'm a farm boy from Iowa. We're part of a ministry called Presbyterian and Reform Ministries International. And they sold wooden crosses that looked like this. And I was buying them and giving them away. And they were $6. Well, that gets to be expensive pretty soon. And then at a college reunion, uh, the group, a college, everybody on my class was being photographed. And the man standing behind me had a nail cross like this. So I said, let's exchange crosses. But when he gave me his, I said, because I knew I could make these, so I started making them. The nails I buy in boxes, and I often buy five pounds at a time, and I put them on a form, and I glue the three nails together. And when that's dry the next day, I put the long nail and the vise Then I wire the, put the wire, copper wire around. And when that's on, I smash it so it can't come loose. Then I put the, the string on, and then I take and dip the whole thing in a coating. And that is what you see is a coating on top. And I made thousands, and they're in 45 countries. So I have a map in the basement where I make them, showing the countries that these nail crosses are in. The nail crosses are in the United States, Mexico, Canada, Brazil, Nigeria, and France, Spain, Russia, China, India. I don't have a vision per se, but I pray over them as I make them. I'm with the cross to help people on their journey to better their life with Jesus. I can make them, and people's lives are changed, and that's important. And they're changed because Jesus' cross uh, touches them. When they're made in a machine, they all come out the same. Because the machine does just what it's told, and it does it over and over and over. When I make them, no two are like, because I'm not the same. I can't do two of them the same way. Uh, so they're all a bit different. Does that make a difference? No. What it shows is that I pray over them as I make them, that God will use them in his kingdom some way. And We've had people, not only in the States, but other places, comment about that. This is more a hobby than anything. I worked in industry. The uh, Los Alamos National Lab, which is where the first three bombs, were, atomic bombs were made. Then I worked for a company in San Diego called General Atomics. Their main business when I was there was nuclear reactors. I did other things, make fresh water out of salt water, and made heart valves that people have implanted in them today. And there was not quality Christian education where we lived in San Diego. So then I'm, we moved to Racine, Wisconsin, I worked at Johnson Wax, S.C. Johnson's son, and ended up being a director. My first wife and I always wa wanted to own our own company. We bought a company in Houston, and we ran that together. Irene, my first wife, was president of the company, and I worked for her at home and at work. And so we did ran it together. And so she got breast cancer when she was 40. 
and that was not a nice thing. Uh, breast cancer is hard on the person, but it's also hard on the family. Then when she died of liver cancer, I continued to run it. And after three years, God brought my present wife from teaching at Calvin to meet me. My name is Claude Marie Halberta Baldwin Voss. I was born in Switzerland. The nail cross of all the crosses I've ever seen, this is such a vivid symbol. So, I mean, it really talks to you about the cross. Mine is more, is really symbolic. And it's more the, the positive today. I mean, the heart of God and the Last Supper is very different. So a lot of people will look at mine and make a comment, and then I can have a conversation about Jesus. It's a very different thing. But I think his cross, um, I mean, people can't look at it in a neutral way. You know, if you see a cross that's made with nails, it's going to be much more give impactful and you have I mean you can't just think of it as jewelry. Granny and I have taken them to some countries. Granny was ill for a while and she had to go to medical school in Galveston, Texas. Granny and I were walking along the walkway in Galveston along the sea and there was a man sitting under a uh, shade and we're walking along, and he got up and bowed before me and before Granny. Why are you doing that? I always bow to the cross. So we talked to him for a bit. He was a Christian. He had AIDS, and he said, I'm dying. And he said, I'm hungry. Well, we had a grain bar, little grain bars in the car. So I said, we'll give you one. So we went back to the car. I got a cross out for him and all the bars we had and gave it to him. He immediately tore the bar open and was sitting there eating it, holding the cross in his hand. And his name was Pentecost. And so we gave Pentecost a cross. We have given people in church crosses and other places uh, I gave one, Granny and I just took a trip on the Mississippi, and I gave one cross away there. I don't make as many today as I used to. I used to make 27 at a time. Now, I can't stand that long. So the president called me back and said, we really need you. And I said, but I only have two years of college. I said, That's all right. You can teach at Calvin and take any course you need to graduate free of charge. And then I was on my own class list. I took the courses I was teaching. And I, I was Professor Baldwin, and then I was Claude Marie Baldwin's student. Well, it gave me more credits. <laughs> <laughs>